This is Twit. Green asks, what problem is it solving? Why would I even think about getting something like this? Well, so, of course, you're looking for a NAS. And, of course, if you're on this show, maybe you're interested in open source. That's a big deal, right? For Especially for a lot of us. We're BSD nerds at heart. Uh, BSD really powers a lot of what we do at IX. And we've taken that awesome free BSD base, which uh, includes things like ZFS and, of course, the legendary security of it, the ports tree, packages, jails, all those good things. And we've turned that into this product called FreeNAS, which uh, is really a Swiss army knife if you really get right down to it. When you first set it up, you'll be kind of blown away at all the different services it can support, everything from, of course, uh, old school FTP up to uh, you can now do S3 support in it. You can uh, host your own buckets. Ooh. And, of course, NFS, Samba, iSCSI, um, and pretty much everything in between. So it really is kind of a one-stop shop for your NAS. But then as of lately, we've started adding some new things to it where you can run VMs on it. And, of course, you've been able to do jails for a while, which if you're not a free BSD guy, I always got to explain this. Think of Linux, Docker, jails is kind of the thing that came first. Or maybe you're more familiar with Solaris Zones. That would be a better analogy to what FreeBSD jails offer. But uh, definitely just a lot of neat stuff under the hood. And we've seen people do some really wild setups with FreeNAS. So um, don't just uh, judge it immediately by looking at it. You might find out somebody's doing some really crazy setup on it that you didn't even think was possible. But it just kind of gives you the freedom to do that. Now, how did this come about? And, uh, and, and how, is it, uh, how is it so cool? And maybe nobody's ever heard of it. So well, a lot of people have heard about it. We've been surprised when we go to trade shows. That seems to be the first thing people ask us about, like, oh, IX, I've never heard of you, but FreeNAS, oh my gosh, that is amazing. You gotta keep on rocking. But uh, FreeNAS has been around for, oh gosh, going on eight, nine years, I want to say now. Uh, small open source project started on FreeBSD by some folks uh, over in Europe. And uh, IX Systems acquired the rights to that and then kind of took over development of it uh, about six, seven years ago, I want to say. Maybe it's a little longer. Um, I came to the party a little bit after that. But uh, since then, they've sponsored, they did a rewrite of it many, many years ago, and they've hit FreeNAS 9, then they did 9.3 and 9.10, which are based on versions of FreeBSD 9, and then 9.10 was based on FreeBSD 10. And then now we're looking at uh, FreeNAS 11 actually coming out here in the next few weeks, which will be based on FreeBSD 11 stable. But uh, it got started, you know, small and humble, right? NFS, Samba, and some more basic file sharing, and then over time has just grown and expanded and started to add enterprise functionality like uh, Active Directory directory support and your LDAP and Kerberos and all those type of things. Well, this sort of makes sense then if I'm running, say, a commercial network, a small office or whatever. Mm -hmm. But uh, is this, does this have any value for me as just a home user? Sure. And that's actually kind of our, our secret strategy, right? That's how we get into people's lives initially is in the home. So a lot of people grab free NAS because, hey, it's got the word free in it. It's a NAS. It's open source. That kind of gives us all the warm fuzzies, right? So we go ahead and grab that and then you deploy it at your house. And next thing you know, you're rocking plugins, running things like Plex Media Server or Sickbeard or Couch Potato or whatever. So you, you can definitely use it as kind of your home NAS media streaming entertainment center. But in addition, now you're doing your file sharing as well, you know, your NFS and your software. And uh, again, for home users, because it's built on FreeBSD, we're not locked into any particular hardware. So people cobble together all kinds of crazy rigs, you know, some very humble, some that we go, oh, you probably shouldn't run it on that, to other just powerhouses. We've seen some wild builds people have done on their own, and they, you know, they run kind of everything in between. 